Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So we have some big updates in the Debbie Collier case that is about her son. He is speaking out a little bit more. I have an update um, further explaining the last video that I did on him, as well as some new information of him actually explaining what his opinion is on this, on his mother's death, and a pretty big statement, I think. I personally think um, about her walking into the family dollar and what he thinks about that. Um, I mean, wait till you hear it. It kind of shocked me. Uh, and then also talking about his um, sister and whether she had involvement in it, who he thinks is involved. Um, yeah, so I'm going to play the video for you and then I'll read an article to you after that. And the son of Athens woman, Debbie Collier, is breaking his silence. This comes nearly two months after his mother's body was found partially nude and burned in Habersham County. We're all trying to piece it together, and I'm asking again for help because my mom deserves justice. Tonight, Jeffrey Bearden's fight for justice may just leave you with even more questions about this bizarre unsolved mystery. 11 Alive's Cody Alcorn spoke with him tonight. And Cody, what did he decide to, or what made him decide to finally speak with you after all of these weeks? Jennifer, Jeffrey, uh, he wants answers. He wants justice for his mom. And as I learned tonight, he has some questions of his own. The last time we heard from the Habersham County Sheriff's Office was on September 30th. We believe that this act was deliberate and personal. Debbie Collier's body was found on September 11th, 50 miles from her home in Athens in this remote area of Clarksville. The day before her body was found, the Sheriff's Office released this video of who they say was Debbie Collier inside a family dollar not far from the crime scene in Clayton. It doesn't make sense to me why my mom was in Clayton, Georgia, especially that there was a Dollar General that she frequently visited that was less than a mile from her home. And what about the tarp and reusable tote bag she bought? Items which were found next to her partially nude and burned body. I mean, we have tarps at the house. I found about 20 reusable, 20 to 30 <laughs> reusable bags at my mom's house. Something else caught Bearden's eye. I I've never seen my mom wear shorts um, in the last like five years of her life. So you're questioning if that was even your mom in that video? Absolutely. Yeah, I am. I have a lot of concerns. No suspect has been named, but 11 Alive confirmed search warrants were served at Debbie's home and the home where her daughter currently lives. When asked about that. I do not think my sister has the capacity to hurt my, to hurt my mom. Um, she was my mom's lifeline. Um, but I don't trust the people that my sister hangs out with, and that's my concern. As far as the bizarre Venmo payment of $2,385 sent from Debbie's phone to her daughters on the day before her body was found. I've never seen my mom Venmo that large of an amount of money. There's one thing Bearden made very clear. I am not going to stop until you are in jail or you're on death row. Now, Jeffrey Bearden has also questioned how the Habersham County Sheriff's Office has handled this investigation. Bearden tells me last week he called the sheriff, and when he questioned the sheriff about the investigation, how they'd handle it, he, quote, snickered at him on the phone when he pushed for answers. Bearden went so far to ask for the sheriff's resignation on how this whole thing has been handled. Now, I did reach out to the Habersham County Sheriff's Office tonight for a comment but I've yet to hear back. Bearden tells me he will not stop pushing for answers until his mother's killer is caught. Um, yeah, so how about that, right? Um, that's pretty intense that he isn't even sure if the woman that walked into the family dollar is his mother. What? I mean, think about in the beginning, a lot of people were questioning if that was even her. Um, so that's interesting. And then he doesn't think that, um, his sister Amanda is involved, but the people that she hangs out with, that could be anyone from her boyfriend to friends, acquaintances, right? So it, that opens that up still to possibly the boyfriend. Um, just very, very interesting. I was quite, um, I don't know. I, I just really thought that that was interesting to hear from him finally. 
So I'm gonna take us over here, uh, this quick video, I'll play this, it's 45 seconds, and then um, I will refresh it and I'll read the article to you. It's SOP, you always look at the family, the lover, the boyfriend, the ex first. That doesn't mean that they did it. Yeah. But I, I also find it very interesting, you know, the daughter, Amanda Beersley, moved home two days before, 48 hours after she moves home, her mother is dead. Mm. Now, is that connected? I don't know. But there's so many odd circumstances surrounding this. But right now, cops are also saying they know the Venmo was sent to the daughter, but they don't know where the money is, nearly $3,000, and they don't know if it was sent from Debbie Collier's phone. I feel that this Venmo for nearly $3,000 sent just before she goes missing, in the minutes before she goes missing, may be the key to solving this case. Interesting, right? Um, okay, so this says, and this is about um, the last video I put out about Jeffrey. A new twist in the Debbie Collier case comes as her, her son has called for the sheriff handling the investigation into her death to resign after claiming the cop snickered at him during a phone call. Jeffrey Bearden claimed that Habersham County Sheriff Joey Terrell dismissed his concerns regarding his mother's investigation. Quote, I want him to resign. Absolutely, Bearden told the Daily Beast. I would not be the man I am today without my mother, and I can't let another victim's family go through what I went through on the phone with him. Collier's son spoke to investigators last week, sharing his concerns about possible leaks from the sheriff's department to the press, but also to get some updates on the case. According to authorities, the last time Collier, 59, was seen alive was while she was shopping at a family dollar store on September 10th. The wife and mother was spotted purchasing a tarp and a refillable torch later, shortly before her daughter, Amanda Bearden, said she received a Venmo payment of nearly $2,400. The payment had a cryptic message, quote, they are not going to let me go. Love you. There is a key to the house in the blue flower pot by the door. A day later, Collier's burnt body was found an hour away from her Athens, Georgia home with the items she had bought near the crime scene. The investigation into her death had drawn headlines around the country, but authorities have kept quiet about the case. They did say, however, that they do not believe Collier's death was the result of a kidnapping or suicide. Still, several outlets have now reported that investigators are questioning if the woman's death was a homicide. According to now Habersham, these sources have revealed <clears throat> details of Collier's death. However, the state medical examiner hasn't released a final autopsy report. <clears throat> because of these reports, Bearden said he reached out to the sheriff's department and asked that he be kept updated on any important information in the investigation. Quote, I explained my concerns for my family and my own physical safety about being doxxed online due to the ex extensive media coverage of my mother's case, he said. However, Bearden claimed that Terrell told him that he didn't know of any leaks before explaining that the press had the right to free speech. While Bearden continued to explain his frustrations, he said the sheriff proceeded to snicker. I had to ask him to stop. I told him that I felt like it was disrespectful to laugh at my circumstance, said Bearden. I, and when I began to push further about the leaks, he said, I'm trying not to hang up on you. Bearden, who has been asking for privacy from the public, as the investigation continues, ultimately hung up on Terrell and filed a complaint the next day. Quote, unfortunately, the elected sheriff's attitude, lack of understanding and misbehavior does not give me faith or confidence in their ability to handle her deliberate and personal death, he wrote in an email to the sheriff deputy. Please let me know if you need any additional information regarding my request for a formal complaint to be filed. I want to ensure this is done in a timely manner. A spokesperson for the Habersham County Sheriff's Office told the Daily Beast that the department is, quote, certainly sympathetic to the emotional tension that the extended period of time taken to investigate such a complex and unique case causes a family seeking answers. We can assure you that Sheriff Terrell, as well as all involved members of the Sheriff's Office, have nothing but respect and understanding towards the family and that any misunderstandings regarding discussions related to this case are nothing more than just that, a misunderstanding the spokesperson added. However, at the same time, it is incumbent on us to exhaust every theory of what happened and to drive at a finding that is based on facts and evidence rather than speculation and rumor. As stated several times in the past, the scene involved 
in this case resulted in more questions than answers. As soon as all requested information has been received, analyzed, and evaluated, the Sheriff's Office will provide a complete statement regarding the findings of this investigation. Bearden said he was surprised to learn that the department called the phone call a, quote, misunderstanding. What is your definition of respect at this point, he asked. At this point, my mother has passed. What we know, what we want to know now is what happened to her so that we can move forward, so that we can get justice. The U.S. Sun has requested, has reached out to the Habersham County Sheriff's Office for comment. And that's the end of it. You know, that's where it ends. They reached out for comment. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, Habersham County Sheriff's Office um, gives any further statement. I mean, that, that was quite a statement right there. Um, back to Jeffrey's message, um, email, you know, complaint filing. Um, and so we'll see if anything else is said to media, right? Media or, or whatever you'd like to call the U.S. on. Um, so I don't know. But anyway, that's the that's what's going on right now. There's a um, bit of friction happening between Jeffrey and the police department. And um, I, it's interesting to hear his thoughts on this and what he thinks happened um, or possibly could have. So at this point, you could see he doesn't think his sister's involved, thinks maybe possibly somebody to do with her, though doesn't even know that that was his mother that was up there in the family dollar doesn't know why she would have been up there when there was one within a mile from her home which is something that i've been saying this entire time not only is there one that close to her home there are multiple within a close radius of her home that she absolutely did not need to drive an entire hour in order to get to a family dollar it's so i've been saying this this whole time like that doesn't even make any sense so uh very interesting i i I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Um, I will give you guys any updates that pop up. Anything that comes out, I will let you know and I'll update you on it. But I hope that you all have a good day. I will talk to you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone.